I'm going to explain what a reactive UI architecture is. So, normally what happens with UI apps is that we're going to get some sort of component and then maybe we're going to have another component tree and we're going to have a child component there and a child component there. And what's going to happen is that we need to get all of these components sort of sharing data. And if we take a framework like React, what React will do is React will sort of force us to do a lot of this data sharing inside the components. And it does this normally by giving us things like state, giving us things like props. Now, React isn't the only framework that gives us tools, obviously, to be able to share information between these components. If you go into things like Angular, and you have various bindings and whatnot that we can do. You know, once you've used enough of these, uh, these frameworks, you realize that there's some common patterns with them. And it's that they're trying to do so much that they actually end up getting in your way because what they, they do is they suck a lot of this information through the framework because that's the only way they can provide the mechanism for the frameworks to actually update and to actually be able to, you know, do the job of them, you know, sharing, essentially sharing data between them. So you may have the situation where you've got some sort of filtered list and then you may have, you know, a search component of that. And, you know, what that will actually get pulled into the components and, you know, all this sharing gets done. What we really need to do is we need to keep a lot of these components simpler and we need to do that by slimming them down and removing a lot of this information that's usually done in state and props and in bindings and remove it to a separate architecture. And so what we do is we move to in a completely external system and the logic ring we call this we call this the black box, and the black box is just a mental model that defines having a completely clear separation of concerns between stuff that has to go in the framework, but that doesn't need to go in the framework, which is usually our data and our presentation models, etc., etc. And um, But in the black box, we must be able to push out updates back to the components when they're ready. And so what we do is we get the components to firstly notify the black box that they need updates and then the black box will push updates back. And this is done with a reactive architecture. And what a reactive architecture fundamentally says, and it's actually really simple, is it just says we're going to have some sort of variable, let v equals, and we're gonna put some sort of state into it. And what's gonna happen is that V, that V is gonna become the center of some sort of uh, data model. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to begin to build data models further down the line, okay? And what's gonna happen is these data models are simply going to be reactively updated in line when that is changed. And there's two specific problems the reactive architecture solves, and this is what we teach at Logic Room. The first one is timing, timing and encapsulation, encapsulation. And what this rule says is that often in JavaScript apps, when we follow the framework and we do everything using the framework's inbuilt uh, mechanisms to do data updates, we can often get to the situation where things update in the wrong time. Okay, you know, things are going to be updated and we get these horrible side effects happening in our components. I'm sure you've come across this. And we also get encapsulation issues where we get information that bleeds from one component out into another component. And by moving everything into this black box and by building a reactive architecture where we, we are very careful to only set our base state and then have a series of modules that will update and transform and mutate data downwards and having a very clear input and output to this black box driven by a reactive architecture that is one way in nature. Okay, this is what we're talking about. It's a one way data flow of data with one simple state stored in the middle. What happens is that we eliminate timing issues and we eliminate encapsulation issues and this has profound consequences for the architecture of our components, the testability and the scalability. If you would like to know more about building a reactive UI architecture in an easy and simple way, I'm running a free web training class this week. In it, we're gonna be going over three things. Firstly, I'm gonna be teaching you eight breakthrough principles that you can begin using today to help you build more scalable and testable UI architecture in any framework. Secondly, I'm gonna be teaching you the day-to-day -day process that you can begin using today to write better code, and it's gonna give you a guardrails approach so you can scale as you build. And thirdly, I'm gonna be teaching you how to make the journey from being a UI engineer to being a UI architect. 
I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you want to join me on the webinar, what you do is you click the link on or around this video. You're going to get taken through to another page. You just pop your details in, sign up, and you're going to be seeing me on the other side teaching all this wonderful stuff. Cheers.